Okay, I'll call to order the special call meeting of the Bowling Green Board of Commissioners for uh, August 18th, 2020. I'll call the roll. Perigen. Here. Beasley Brown. Here. Denning. Here. Nash. Here. Wilkerson is here. First item is approval of the minutes for our special meeting on August 4th, 2020. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? I'll call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. And Wilkerson is yes. The first item is Municipal Order 2020. 128, Municipal Order approving the promotions of Brian Harrell to the position of Deputy Police Chief, Robert Hansen to the position of Assistant Police Chief, Eric Couchins to the position of Police Captain, and Mark Kaiser to the position of Police Sergeant in the Police Department. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Mr. Meisel. As you know, we, uh, we had a chief to retire, Chief Hawkins, and we approved the uh, promotion of Chief Delaney just a few weeks ago. With that comes promotion opportunities at four different levels of the police department. And we are here today to announce those. I'm gonna turn it over to Chief Delaney standing by at our police community room. Chief Delaney, you there? Yes, sir, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I'm pleased to announce we have four promotions. As Mr. Model expressed from the retirement of Chief Hawkins and our promotion created some vacancies. And one of the first ones I like to go over is the position of Mark Kaiser, the promotion of sergeant, and he would come forward. Him and his wife Emily here today uh, for this celebration. Mark Kaiser started with the police department in 2010. Uh, recently, he's assisted us with the uh, curriculum for the law enforcement academy here in Bowling Green. He's a member of the he's been a member of our critical response team firearms instructor, patrol training officer, and he does an exceptional job training our new and young officers. Uh, and he takes time, caring, and understanding to make sure that they, they're trained well. So that's one of the qualities he has is patience. Uh, and he's very good at training officers. Uh, like I said, his wife Emily's here to celebrate with him today. So the first promotion will be for Mark Kaiser uh, to start. The second one, uh, Eric Couchins. Uh, Eric Couchins, uh, his wife Jessica, and his daughter Eddie are here today to celebrate with him. Uh, he started with the police department in 2007. He's currently uh, in our training division, but Eric graduated WKU with a BS with his major in physics in 2008. And he helped develop the curriculum for the Bowling Law Enforcement Academy. He's a member of our PRT member, uh, response team. He's a PTO trainer, accident reconstructionist, PT instructor, and like I said, a training sergeant. And he's been an integral part in uh, helping get our captain as we go. So the second promotion today will be for Sergeant Eric Dobbs to the position of the captain. Third, Captain Robert Hansen, come forward, please. His fiance, Jennifer, and his father, Alan, are here today to come celebrate with him. Uh, Robert started his career early with us in 1997 as a cadet. So we, Robert's grown up here in the police department with us. And in 2000, he became a police officer. Uh, he graduated at Western Kentucky University uh, in 2004 with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and then a Master of Public, Education, of Public Administration in 2006. Uh, he's instructor for our academy. He's a Kelly C certified instructor. He's been the federal law enforcement training center, be a driving instructor, crisis intervention, training instructor, firearms instructor, fitness instructor, a taser instructor. Uh, he's a graduate of the Academy of Police Supervision and a graduate of the Criminal Justice Executive Development Program. Uh, he's also been on our honor guard. He's been a training officer. He was on our critical response team where he served as a sniper and also as a team leader, a motorcycle officer, and a motorcycle unit supervisor. So he's done a lot of things that were Happy to please announce for him to be promoted to major. 
Last but not least, Commissioner Brian Earl. Go for it, please. Commissioner Earl's wife, Michelle, and son, Nathan, are here to celebrate with us today. Uh, Major Earl started with us in 1996. He has a bachelor's degree from Western Kentucky University. He graduated from uh, Southern Police Institute Administrator Officers Course. He's also a graduate of the Criminal Justice Executive Development Course, Academy for Police Supervision. Uh, Major Earl has spent a tremendous amount of time in criminal investigations. That's where his strong suit was, where he excelled, uh, not only in the military side, but also in the police side, where he's been to extensive background training in homicide investigations, sex crimes, child forensic interviewing, and interviewing and interrogation, uh, where he also excelled his hostage negotiations. Brian can talk to you at the end of Sometimes he talks about things that I don't believe are happening. <laughs> uh, one of the medals that he received was uh, for a detective work after a guilty verdict in a multi million dollar embezzlement investigation. So Major Earl is great at what he does. He's also retired from the military for 24 years, where he retired as a chief warrant officer. Uh, and he served as a combat medic, flight medic, a drill sergeant, a CID special agent. He was deployed a couple times with Desert Storm and Desert Storm 91, and also deployed for Iraq for operations for Iraq and Greek. So the last promotion, last but not least, I recommend Major Brian Earl, the spot of deputy chief. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, yes. <laughs> Joe, I'm scared did to recognize miss, you, but go ahead. Did I miss Brian Harrell? He's right here. Yes, sir. He's here. Where is he? There's a delay. It's a delay. It's a delay. Okay, I, I see I see you now. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate all of you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you've been here for many years. Uh, you've moved from the bottom to the top. And I want you to know this. I know you will protect the Bowling Green community. But here's what I want you to hear. And I want you to hear it well. I want you to protect yourself. Never hesitate in doing what is right. And I mean that. The word is hesitate. Never hesitate in doing what is right. I don't want any of you, any of you, and the people you supervise to get hurt. I had a gun thrown up in my face in 1970, and the man was going to kill me. And I, I have the gun at home now. 38 Smith and Wesson, six shot, never taking the bullets out of it. I got it away from him, and uh, I had pulled my 357 and leveled down on him. Had he taken another step, Anyhow, uh, Chief, I want to ask you this. I, I, I know you made these appointments, and they're all good men, and the women you supervised and so This Harold guy, this Harold officer, did, uh, did I know he's come up through the ranks, but did you do some double checking on him? <laughs> Yes, sir. We checked him out thoroughly. He's more than qualified. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I, I was worried about him. I've known him a, a long time, and uh, he's always been a Class A fellow. And if you say he's all right, I believe you. Okay. He's all right. Yes, sir. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Are there any other Comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? Yes. Nash? 
Yes. And Wilkerson is yes. Congratulations to all of you. I suggest you suggest you disconnect so we won't be listening to the rest of your program over there. All right. Next item is Municipal Order 2021-29, Municipal Order Authorizing and Accepting Bid Number 2020-50 for APC Uninterruptible Power Supply Replacement for the Police Department from Insight Public Sector Incorporated at Tempe, Arizona in the amount of $117,101.98 in motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. Mr. Mazza. You all remember uh, the last meeting we accepted a grant for this equipment and uh, we, we got a grant of 103-106-71. We went out for bid and we are selecting uh, Insight Public Sector Inc. of Tempe, Arizona uh, for our UPS uh, system. This is the uninterruptible power system that kicks in before the generator takes effect when there's power outages at the police station. And so uh, our existing UPS is 15 years old. It's time to replace it. Fortunately, we got the grant in and we have the bid in hand for, for the uh, 117 101. That only gives us a difference to cover of 13,995, which is gonna be covered out of the two 911 funds. And so that puts us in, in really good position want to thank everybody that worked on this grant for getting it. Thank uh, Lynn Hartley for working on this bid and getting this close to what we uh, had for the, for the grant. So be glad to answer any questions. Are there any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. And Wilkerson is yes. Next is Municipal Order 2020-130. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2020-58 for dispatch center console furniture and flooring from Watson Furniture Group Incorporated of Poolsville, Washington in the total amount of $160,713.25. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Mr. Mazza. This was another grant that you all approved last meeting uh, from the 911 Services Board. This one is for the console workstations in our dispatch center. Uh, we were able to get um, 112,336 in grant funds, which is gonna cover the console furniture that we're buying to replace the workstations in dispatch. We're going from seven workstations to nine. Uh, and along with this, we're going to go ahead and place the flooring, get that more stable underneath uh, the, the floor for the dispatch room at, at police station at 911 Kentucky. And so the flooring is the 48,377. We'll cover that with the 911 funds of uh, 272, 276, the E911, E911 and wireless 911. And then the grant covers all of the furniture uh, purchase. So. This was an evaluated bid. We did get uh, two bids and the evaluated bid turned up uh, for Watson Furniture Group. Uh, price was was weighted in at 50%, 40% for design and 10% on references. We're going with Watson Furniture Group out of uh, Oldsbo, uh, Washington in the amount of 167.13.25. Uh, be glad to try to answer any questions you might have on this item. Are there any comments or questions, Joe? Uh, yeah, Jeff, what kind of uh, how long will it take for delivery from this company? Um, that is a good question, Joe. I think you stumped me on that one. Uh, I don't I don't see it being very long. I think this is probably a six month or less uh, project. And these are ergonomically designed workstations where everything is within reach and well designed for what the dispatchers 
need with their multi screens and all of their equipment. Uh, but it is custom and I, I can't see it going past six months or, or even a year at the longest. So I'll try to get information on that and get back to you though. I wasn't so concerned about the quicker. length of the project as much as the delivery on time part. Well, the tricky part about this project is we've got to replace the, the raised floor at the same time. So we've got to get the flooring done and that's going to all be synchronized in with getting the consoles in too. So we thought while we're in that room, we've already, I think we've already done some uh, painting and fixing up, but that floor right now is squeaky and it's got a lot of give in it. We're, we're trying to stabilize the floor with, with a new, flooring system as well that's the forty eight thousand dollars and then we'll set everything in on top of that okay thank you any other comments or questions it'll, be, it'll move along as fast as we can get it to move along okay i'll call the roll perigen yes easily brown yeah denning yes Nash? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Municipal Water 2021 uh, 31. Municipal Water authorizing the acceptance of Homeland Security grant funds through the Federal Emergency Management Agency fiscal year 2019 assistance to firefighters grant program in the amount of 90700 $82.27 for the purchase of fitness equipment for the fire department. Motion by Wilkerson, second by Perridge and Mr. Mazza. I'd like to thank uh, Nick and Brent for, for working with fire department on this grant. Uh, we were awarded 90% of what we needed. It's a 90% uh, grant. Uh, so we're gonna get the 90,782.27. Uh, we have, uh, worked on the estimate for equipment and we're looking at around 99,000 on the equipment. The 10% difference would come out of the um, FY21 city budget. I believe that's in the fire improvement fund, but this equipment that we are replacing is roughly 15 years old. Some of it, it's original equipment that we handed down from parks years ago to fill some of the stations. So we're hoping to get uh, everything fitted up along with the new Lover's Lane station as well with fitness equipment for the firemen for them to be able to stay fit and be able to pass their uh, their fitness test from, from here on out. So uh, this is uh, a FEMA type grant and Brent's here to answer any grant questions you might have on this, but it's for the fire department. It'll be a 10% a match and we'll be getting the 90,782.77. Jeff, what will they do with the old equipment? Is it a swap type uh, bed or what's gonna happen? I'll, uh, I'll let Katie jump in here, but I think if it's still workable, we'll probably try to surplus it and put it in an auction. Uh, Katie, you have any comments on that? We will surplus uh, anything that we're not going to relocate to another one of our facilities. And I would imagine due to the age of most of that equipment and already having been handed down once, we'd probably just surplus it. So it'll it'll go to the uh, surplus storage until we can have a, an online auction. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? I said yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Next is Municipal Order 2020-132. Municipal Order authorizing and directing the mayor to enter into grant, grant agreements for flexible neighborhood grants with various neighborhoods motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen, Mr. Meisel. Probably for over 20 years, we've been doing these select neighborhoods action program grants through our NCS department. 
this year with the COVID-19, we had to uh, step back and think about a, a different way of, of putting these out. And so I'd like to thank Karen Foley and Brent Childers on working out uh, what we call a flexible neighborhood grant. And that's uh, what we're looking at here tonight. We've got uh, several uh, recipients uh, that I'll name real quick of this flexible neighborhood grant program that we're using uh, SNAP grant funds uh, to use on. So uh, the, the neighborhood and associations that are gonna receive uh, grant funding are the Crestmore neighborhood, the Chinwith neighborhood, Eaglestone Villas Condo Association, the Foundry, Housing Authority of Bowling Green, and all these total up to $28,000. Uh, the details are in your packets and the memo of what they'll be using these funds for. And uh, I'll be glad to try to answer any questions you may have. Brent Childers is also with us and can hopefully answer any questions you all, you all may have on these. Are there any comments or questions? Dana? Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say um, how excited I am reading about some of these projects, um, especially the one where it's going to help a, a neighborhood with a lot of high risk folks in it to stay active and healthy to help um, you know keep them healthy during this pandemic. And so I think that's a great way to make a program flexible, especially in this moment. And then seeing um, what's going to be happening at the Housing Authority and helping kids get access to internet while we have to be virtual um, this next year for a lot of kids. So both of those, I think, were such wonderful projects. Um, so just thank Karen and the team, because um, I think these are really beautiful ways to strengthen neighborhoods and make a difference in people's lives. Any other comments? I'll call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? Brown. Yes. Denning? Nash. Yes. Wilkerson is no. Next item is Municipal Order 2020-133. Municipal Order approving construction and accepting maintenance of Burr Oak subdivision. Motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Mr. Meisel. We've had a request from uh, the developer of Burr Oak subdivision, which is over on Fairview Cemetery Road. Uh, all inspections have been uh, done to accept this into the city by planning and zoning and our own city engineer staff. We are looking at a total of uh, 1,019 linear feet of roadway along with the uh, sidewalk alongside with stormwater. Uh, this is a residential subdivision, so there are some places where sidewalk was not completed, but we do have a $25,000 cash bond in place and have a one year agreement to get that completed on the remaining sidewalk. And uh, I have Melissa standing by, uh, she's watching, but if you all have any questions that I can't answer, I think she can text me and have to help answer any questions if I have on this, but it's just a standard accepting, acceptance of a subdivision uh, inside the city. Are there any Borough. comments? comments or questions yes uh, our, uh for those that may not know this is the property on cemetery road where the great big american flag was always on the lawn uh that's bob burr's subdivision and he lives in the big house at the back from Cemetery Road at the back of the project. Thank you. Slim, did you have a question or comment? I did. Uh, I, I just want to clarify, and I'm trying to uh, crane my neck to look at the, the, the uh, map. This is the subdivision on Fairview Avenue, not the subdivision on Lover's Lane. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Any other comments or questions? And okay. Slim's right. We just approved the other night uh, and acceptance over at uh, where Slim is talking about cemetery. I mean, yeah, cemetery road yeah. and Lovers Lane. 
that, sure. that was Burr Rock, B U H R Rock. This is Burr, B U R R Oaks. Got it. So it's pretty close, but different, different location. Anything else? I'll call the roll. Harrigan? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? Snash? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Uh, in relation to what Slim was talking about, that one at Cemetery Road in Lovers Lane that, that we accepted the other night is the uh, Ford Boys uh, at Ford Furniture. They own it. Right. Next item is the first reading of Ordinance BG 2020, number 23, Ordinance Amending Code of Ordinances, Ordinance Repealing Existing Chapter 18 and Adopting Revised Version of the City of Bowling Green Code of Ordinances, Chapter 18, for occupational license fees and taxes to make various changes. Uh, motion by Wilkerson and second by Perigen. Mr. Meisel. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Katie, Jean, and Hillary for working on this. I think this is one of the first uh, big snowballs we threw at Hillary to work on when she came in. Uh, but Katie, Katie has done a great job at uh, proposing some changes to this chapter. This chapter has always been kind of difficult to read. Um, and so what we've done is try to reorganize it. We've worked in some new language uh, for our inspectors, giving them uh, kind of an acknowledgement and recognition of the, th the fact that they are out there and they do have powers. Uh, we tried to make it known that this is not a regulatory license that we're issuing. It's a business registration. So that's one of the items we tried to clarify. Put all the definitions to the beginning. We put uh, one section in for income that's subject to taxation, a separate section that for income that's not subject to taxation to separate those a little bit more, uh, clarifying the tax exempt versus nonprofit organizations. And, and things like that. Katie did a really good job with her memo explaining all of the changes. And so I'm going to uh, defer to her for any any detailed questions you might have, or, or Katie, if you have any more uh, general comments on this, this uh, revision of chapter 18. I would just like to also thank Sean Weeks, um, Jennifer Phillips and David Line from the finance department who also put many hours into making sure that this document was as comprehensive as we could make it and as um, legible and understanding in layman terms as we could make it um, and incorporating all the practices that are already in place, removing any deleted or obsolete type language, and then just making basic clarifications and adding in some minor additional language, but we have not changed the basic content uh, of the document. So we were not proposing any changes to any of the fees or the structure of those fees. Um, this is just simply really just restructuring and making it more comprehensive and, and user friendly. That's the only question that I've been asked if we're not raising taxes or making it expansive to a different group of information. It's just clearing up and cleaning up the language for this chapter to make it more legible and understandable. Correct. Are there any other? Comments or questions? I, I, I want to say you all did a great job. Fantastic. Looks Thank good. You. Dana, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also just wanted to thank you all. Um, I know when I talk to small business uh, owners, they are uh, just talked about how you know they want to make sure they comply, but it, it's a little nerve wracking. So I think any little thing we can do to help it uh, easier for folks to read and um, be able to feel confident that they are um, doing um, you know their part. Uh, great. So thank you all for taking the time to make it more user friendly. Um, I had two just clarifying. Um, I guess I'm just asking you to expand a little bit on your explanation of um, just the clarifying the difference between the let's see where it is the transient permit versus the special event permit, and then also um, just maybe if you could talk a little bit about the um, appeals process. 
Okay, so I'll address the uh, transient permit information and then I'll have the attorneys speak to the appeals process. But uh, what we wanted to do is we had sort of buried in the section with special events and transient permit fees, kind of all of it together. So what I wanted to do was separate out what is specifically the transient permit fees, which those are for businesses that are here on a temporary basis. And there's, there's different types of those. And so I wanted to have each of those identified within their own paragraph. And so under 18.3.02, um, which should be, let me get the right page number for you. Twenty-six. Yeah, page twenty-six and twenty-seven um, basically identifies for you the specific types of the transient permit fees. So there could be a um, there's different types of contractors, uh, there's peddlers, um, there's other information like that. So we separated that out, uh, and those are based those fees are based on the number of days or the number of employees that you're going to have on hand for a period of time. And then the, the actual special event permit fee, um, again, there are varying types of events that could take place, but it, and those are, are a different set of standards. And so we wanted to separate those two categories out, make it more understandable and more upfront as to what the transient permit fee is versus what is specifically special event. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you for explaining that. Okay. And then I'll let Jane or Hillary speak to the appeals process. Um, but we did want to try and incorporate some language in here that would allow us to maybe better um, deal with some issues or concerns or controversies that may come up, give us a little bit of flexibility in being able to deal with those. And so, Jane, if you want to respond. Uh, I will. I will quickly first, and Hillary can jump in. Um, First, I guess, say finance does a great job of collecting this chapter. I don't know what their numbers are, but it's probably what, okay, 90, 95% of the, the, the funds are collected. The finance does it initially. Uh, from time to time, though, there's going to be people who are not paying withholdings, which is a little worse on withholdings because that money's not theirs. It belongs to the employees that they took out or, or the net profits. Uh, but sometimes the, uh, you know, the business owner may come to us and say for some kind of reason, uh, I'm having trouble making the payments or, or particularly net profits because we want to withhold it so we can get them. Um, to, I guess in the past, we've always had uh, some negotiation power. We just never had language in the ordinance. You know, if somebody could come in and give us a good reason, we would try to work with them and, and help with them. We do payment plans too, but, you know, we've worked with them in the past, but the ordinance never really had good language in it. So we thought if we're going to, you know, negotiate with people, we need some language, you know, to actually give us that authority to do it. So that was the first thing. Um, and we put that, you know, after we put that in, we also thought that, um, you know, sometimes it's maybe it's not as good to let the, uh, the department that makes the initial determination also be the department that makes the final determination. Um, it's kind of like, you know, you're appealing to yourself. So we thought that if there was some person who came in gave us a good reason uh, why they couldn't pay the penalties and interest. We're not going to forgive the actual taxes. You know, we're not going to do that. Penalties and interest, maybe. Uh, but if they had a good reason, the first uh, step would be the finance department. Uh, if they were not satisfied with the finance department, we thought a good process appeal issue would be let them to least appeal to the city manager, uh, have a fresh uh, eyes, look at it, fresh ears to hear their, uh, uh, their explanation, at least give them you know, one more opportunity to appeal the decision from the finance uh, uh, department about why we should need to negotiate with them a little more. Hillary, anything else? Or? I don't think so. I think that's correct. We just wanted to make sure there was a fair process here in case someone did not like the fees that were assessed or the penalties or the interest or wanted to work something out that the finance department or Jeff in, you know, conjunction with us could work out payment plans or maybe not impose penalties, but whatever needs to be done and that, that it's spelled out in here how we handle that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Beasley Brown? 
Yes. Denning. Yes. Yes. I got you, Joe. Nash? Yes. Sorry, didn't hear. Wilkerson is yes. The second reading will be at our next meeting. Next is the first ordinance for BG 2020-24, first reading, ordinance annexing property by consent, ordinance annexing a total of approximately 0.96 acre of property located at 5844 Scottsville Road with property presently owned by CSR BG Investments LLC with said territory being contiguous to city limits and further approving an associated economic development annexation incentive agreement motion by Wilkerson, second by Perigen, Mr. Meisel. Can not hear you. Jeff, I can't hear you. I apologize, I, I muted myself. Uh, as, as you probably figured out, this is the old Audi next to the old Audi driving range. Uh, as you can see on your map, it says Audi Way. There are apartments back in there now. This is one sliver of that property uh, that did not get annexed at the time. Uh, the road frontage is where snowballs, uh, icy uh, dessert things are that fronts Scottsville Road. Uh, Brent worked on this with the developer. Uh, we did give an incentive to the, the rest of this development. This was the last piece of it. And so Brent worked with the developer on this uh, to get this annex and uh, there is an incentive agreement attached in your packets and I'll let uh, Brent uh, add any comments or answer any questions you might have on this. Any comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Perishin? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Next is the second reading of Ordinance BG 2020, number 21, Ordinance Rezoning Real Estate, Ordinance Rezoning a Portion of Attractive Land Containing 4.68 Acres from heavy industry to highway business, located at 5557 National Road, presently owned by Bowling Green Area Economic Development Authority and Carrot Ron Bunch. Uh, this is a second reading uh, by a unanimous recommendation from planning and zoning. Are there any further comments or questions? I'll call the roll. Perigen. Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Denning? Say it again, Joe. Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson is yes. Next is the second reading of ordinance BG 2020-22. If you'll allow me an indulgence, Mr. Harmon, are you still there? Will you read that for us, please? Caught you off guard. Yeah, you did. I put down the floor. Uh, I need a pin, pinch hitter. Ordinance, <laughs> ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning tracts of land containing 0 0.45 acre from RM2 to family residential to RM3 townhouse multifamily residential located at 0 Kenton Street, presently owned by Triton Properties of Bowling Green LLC in care of Mitch Wright. And that motion is by Wilkerson, second by Perigen. And I threw Gene under the bus because that's his last uh, meeting that he'll be with us. And I just wanted to hear his voice one more time. Thank you, Gene. He threw, he threw it down on the floor. Generally throws things on the floor that I sent to him, so I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I use your footprints all of them too. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is the second reading of a, a unanimous recommendation from planning and zoning. Is there any further comments or questions? Can, can uh -huh. Gene speak again so he'll jump up on my big screen? 
Uh, yes, this is the second reading of this one. I think unanimous decision uh, by the Planning Commission. So now the recommendations for you for final. Did you get his picture? So much. All right. The, again, this was a second reading. Uh, and I'll call the roll. Harrington? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Benning? Yes. Nash? Yes. yes. And, and Wilkerson is yes. And both of those will become effective in publishing on Friday. That's the last item on the agenda since no one signed up for pub public comments in our next scheduled meeting is September 1st, 2020. And Gene, thank you again, buddy. We appreciate you.